Well, hello, my brothers and sisters. Um, I have another transparent moment. I have another transparent moment that I want to talk about. I want to talk about it briefly. Um, something about my life that many of you haven't um, heard heard from me. Uh, probably those who've been following me for um, three, four, five years, you know, you know some of my story. But um, the title of my message. The title of my message today is to protect your triggers. Protect, protect your triggers, your triggers. And you know, when you think about a trigger, you think about, you know, most people think about a gun um, that with the with the trigger on it, that if, if, you push, if you push that little handle there, then the bullet on the inside of the gun will go off and shoot. And so in other words, a trigger, when someone is, uh, when, 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 when people think of a trigger, they think about, they got their finger on the tr trigger and ready to shoot. But in this sense, in this sense, in this sense, what I mean by trigger is being upset, something that's going to make you go off the handle, something to make you mad, something to make you cry, something to make you fight, something to make you cuss, something to make you angry. Triggers are things, triggers are things, if I could, you know, bring it bring it into um, into an, an emotional or our situation I would say a trigger is a, an emotion a hurt a trigger is a hurt that doesn't have closure you could say that a trigger is a hurt or a rejection or something that 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 has been done or that that's that 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 done, that done, done come forth or, or a situation or a scenario in your life um, that happened but the scenario in your life that happened, it didn't find no closure. Either that was a, a, a bad and ugly, nasty breakup, fallout, disagreement, somebody died, or whatever it was, it was something that cut it. It was something that cut the relationship. And and what it did, uh, it's brought a lot of pain. And, and the trigger is when you think about that relationship or when you think about that breakup. You think about the people. You think about the event. You think about the moment. Anything, any, any time you think about the thing that happened, that just happened, that cut, there was no closure. It can bring out a trigger. The scripture says, the scripture says, uh, uh, be angry, but sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So, so in other words, God, God is saying that ain't nothing wrong with being angry, but don't allow that anger to linger. See, because when you allow that anger to linger, the sun will go on at it. You're gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna follow through with it. You're gonna follow through with it. See, because what happens when you become angry? What, what feeds that anger is your imagination, those thoughts. And, and the main thing, the one that's gonna do it, the prince of the air, the accuser, of the brother, he's gonna come. The enemy's gonna come, and he's gonna begin to, to gas you up and, and, and whatever you're thinking and, and wherever you are, where you're about to blow a top, or whatever something. That that person didn't do. It's almost like what the enemy does. What the enemy does. It's like it's like it's like the diet pill that I talked about, where the diet pill it made me lose weight, but every a negative emotion it heightened it. Every a negative emotion they became big, and that's what the enemy does. That's what the enemy does. That's what the enemy does when you when when you've been hurt. Every negative conversation, every negative event. It, it becomes large. It's like a, a replay. It's like a camera in your spirit that you go, you're always seeing. It, it, it's been blew up. Where it, was, it could be something small. But when the enemy get in it, it's like putting kerosene on a fire. <laughs> and you know what happened with that. But in a sense, let me, let me make this a little short. In a, in a sense, trigger. I want to tell you about my life. My life and uh, my trigger. When my trigger. And, and God has, uh, to be honest... God has delivered me or he's delivered me from this one particular thing. And uh, to be honest, it happened when my son back in 2018, Daniel, got paralyzed. Got paralyzed. It happened. And at the time, uh, it was a it was a, it was a it was almost like a nightmare. It was almost like a nightmare when things happened, how they happened, how all of a sudden he had became uh, his left leg, his left leg became numb. Well, his left leg became paralyzed. Uh, and by the time he got to the hospital, his right leg had went out. And the frustration 
of that that situation as a father me personally taking it you know thinking that I've done something wrong as a prophet saying why didn't why didn't why God why you didn't let me see it and so all of this stuff and, and with my son it was almost like another thing because prior that I had lost my mother my sister my niece you know and now my son getting paralyzed. As a matter of fact, I had did my, my niece's eulogy. Did a eulogy. And what was it? Probably a year later, that's when I touched my son. And um, it's my heart. My heart. Daniel's my heart. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> he my heart. I choked somebody over Daniel. I ain't gonna lie. That's my, my heart. See, the thing about with Daniel too, Daniel was a preemie. Daniel was born three months premature. And when he was born, he didn't have no lungs. And so he was in NICU for three months. And so we, we stayed there all the time. And I just watched him and prayed, prayed and prayed. And God spoke to my heart and through my mom and the name of Daniel, Daniel. And you know about Daniel. There was a prophet. And because of some, some manipulative people, he was in a, he found himself because he was doing good things for God and praying. He found himself in a den, a den with lions. But you know what? That next morning, the lion's mouth was stopped up and Daniel was okay. And so I know God had hand is on my son. I don't know if you even saw I had, Also, I, I did a, there was a video. I think right before it happened to Daniel, I prayed for, prayed for him in some church service that God would protect him and stuff like that from dangers, the enemy and all of that. So all this stuff all this stuff done happened. All this stuff done happened, you know, emotional. And then when Daniel becomes paralyzed, everyone that I thought was my, not everyone, but most people that I thought was my friends or that supported me, that, that cared about me, no one came around. No one came around. And it's crazy because at this time, now this is where my trigger's at. And, and, and I had to learn. I had to learn about trauma. I had to learn about trauma and, and not everybody can deal with and handle trauma. But God had gave me the grace because the truth of the matter is when my son was paralyzed and, and then he, the hospital and the therapy, me personally, I was the one that was doing all of it. And um, I'm grateful at the time. You know, I, I didn't think about it, but I, I get to that. Uh, yeah, I, I was just grateful to be able to do it. But then there came a time when, you know, my son, he had to even uh, go to, to to the doctor all the time to, to practice walking, to practice his knees, to practice all this stuff. And uh, we, I took him, he took, he took about, he had about, he did about at least over a hundred sessions back and forth from my home to, to the doctor uh, to walk with his braces, to do different therapies. And the thing that at the time that had frustrated me was that I was doing it all by myself. Doing it all by myself. And um, and because I was doing it all by myself, you know, I'm thinking, well, you know, shouldn't certain certain people be here? You know, in my mind. And I know that's what the enemy was trying to get to me. Because I, even though I was doing, you know, support my son, at the same time I was noticing who wasn't helping. I wasn't noticing who wasn't around. And what that did by me noticing all of that, keep on doing what my son for Daniel. But then my son Daniel, his mother, he went away. At the point of at the point of him walking, getting stronger every week, every week, every week, every week, every week. And and I'm looking at how strong he's getting every week and the ones that was was noticing the, the videos. But then all of a sudden, she took him and moved him away on the West Coast. At the point where he was about to, in my opinion, from watching him, that he was about to, at some point, walk without those braces. But then, once he was taken away, all that was stopped. And I would not lie, I was angry. I didn't talk to her for about three months. <laughs> I ain't talked to her. I ain't talked to her because of how it was done. You know, um, angry. I was depressed. Pretty much the whole time he was gone, I was pretty much depressed. You know, I didn't want to be around nobody. My wife, nobody. I won't be around nobody because, you know, it felt like a part of me had left. 
and I didn't know what to do. And that was my trigger. That was my trigger. And um, to make a long story short, even though I didn't speak to her for three months, and you know, uh, you know, I wasn't the nicest person to my wife, and because I was worn out, I was worn out. I was mad. I was angry because I felt like you know I was the only one that cared about myself, even though that was not the truth. Because I was basing how people cared based on the action coming around and stuff like that, and so, and and I was basing it on nobody helping. But God had to pull my coattail and let me know, I'm with you. God gave me the grace to be able to, to do the things that I did for the, for the, for that period of time for my son. It, it was only God because I, a natural man would have died because there's many times I felt like that. Felt like it. Felt like it. Felt like it. But he brought me through it. One thing about me, I'm real, man. Nothing about me fake. You want to know how I feel, I'll tell you. And I, I'm I'm di I'm diplomatic in a way now. I'm going to use certain words. I, I'm not going to say stuff that's going to hurt your feelings. I'm going to try not to. <laughs> but, you know, I express myself. I've learned how to because, was, like I said, in a, I think a video I had before, at one time my information was my thorn. And that meant I didn't know how to articulate what I was feeling. I would feel all this stuff, but I didn't know how to get it out. But what brought it out was pain. Pain brought it out. Pain brought it out. When I was betrayed, when I was hurt, my life was turned upside down. That brought it out. That brought it out. You need to know that pain, if you can't talk, if you can't express yourself, you're the quiet kind of person, you just keep it to yourself. You stay in that pain long enough, you're gonna you're gonna learn how to get it out. But not only to get it out, but I, I ask God to teach me how to how to express what I feel in a way, in a respectful way. Because I remember the scripture says a word, a word, word fitly spoken is as apples of gold and pictures of silver. And so I've always tried to be careful of the words that I said because words hurt. And once you say it, you can't take it back. And so, you know, and I'm not a politician, but I've always been careful about my words. And I think my wife don't like that too, so kind of because I'm, I talk around stuff. I talk around stuff because I know, just don't want to hurt nobody. Don't want to hurt nobody. And and I've done it a lot with you and my wife. I felt at least 90% of how I feel because, you know, you just can't tell, express exactly how you feel at times because how you feel might be wrong. It might be misinterpreted. It might be misunderstood. And once you get it out, you can't change it. And so you have to be thoughtful. You have to be thoughtful with your words. But but to make but to, to get back to my son's mother, I'm not talking to her for three months. God spoke to my heart and told me I can't do that. And so I repented. And so I repent again. You know, and so my my goal and my 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 total desire in life is just to do God's will. To do his will, to 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 to, to help his people to speak whatever he's given me because I know he chose me for this hour and so that's why I've been I felt peace desperate to release this stuff to release this word to release his mind to people that's why I come on every day because I know the day's approaching people laugh at me probably I don't care might talk about me I don't care that was a time that I used to but I don't not no more and see that see that's what happened to me for many years I always tried to I worried about what people thought how they felt in that sense but I never thought about how God felt how God thought and so uh, and so now what God did God delivered me and if, if I could be honest God really showed me what true deliverance and true ministry is when my son became paralyzed and he showed me what was fake he showed me what was real and so what's happened now God has removed every fake every phony personality out of my life and it's a liberating it's a liberating uh, feeling you know uh, it's a liberating feeling don't have no friends that's alright I got a friend in Jesus and to God be the glory to God be the glory for the things he's done because the scripture lets us know I ain't gonna lose nothing for the sake of the gospel I lose nothing and so I'm grateful I'm grateful for my relationship with God I'm grateful for God choosing me I'm grateful for God handpicking and handcrafting me 
uh, to be conformed to his image, to be his voice, to be his mouthpiece for such a time as this. And so I'm grateful. And so he's taught me how to protect my mouth, to protect my heart, to protect my triggers. And so that's why I've, I've always been talking about self-control, temperance. You know, uh, being swift to hear, so to speak. Because it can be a challenge at times, especially was, the most difficult thing is being quiet when you want to talk. That's the most humbling thing to say something or do something, want to do something when you can't do nothing at all. But in that place when you can't sit and do nothing at all, that's when wisdom, that's when wisdom is being grown, grown, being formed. Wisdom. That's, that's my baby. I got to go, but those are my words. Those are my words. God bless you and have a smile on you. And so that was my transparent our moment triggers 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 hurts hurts so allow god to deal with those hurts because if you keep ignoring them they're gonna keep growing they ain't gonna go nowhere if you keep ignoring them you're thinking they're gonna go somewhere they ain't gonna go nowhere because when you got hurt if you hadn't if you hadn't dealt with it if god hadn't healed you from it it's gonna flare up it's gonna flare up again and so and you know it so you know stop playing with it stop playing with those emotions stop playing with the thing that you hurt from you know you need healing. You know you know God need to, you need God God to deliver you. So stop playing. And, and and deal with those things. You know what your triggers are. You know when they happen. And you know what brings them up. So what you do, you write a schedule, you write it down in your mind or on a book or somewhere. Or you recognize when those, when those things come. I'm gonna tell you what I did with those pills. When I knew that those pills made me angry. So the next time I took the pill, I did take the pill again. I, I was just trying to lose weight. <laughs> I did take the pill again. I did take the pill. But this time when I took the pill and when I when I got moved and I got angry, I knew where it came from. I knew it was yeah, I knew it was the pill. You know, so cause you know, with those pills also, it mess with your mind. That's a, it mess with your mind, your emotions. There, there, there's there's stuff that when you when you're a sensitive person anyway and you take certain things to help certain conditions, the side effect that'll make you super sensitive. Super sensitive. So just just be wise and everything. Be wise, and then and, and check yourself out. Observe yourself. We are always trying to judge other other people. Judge yourself. Judge your behaviors. You know, judge the things that you do, you don't do, and see how it doesn't make sense. See see what's wrong, what went different, because you know we're creatures of habit. When when something breaks the pattern of habits, then you have to you have to investigate, because when something has broke. The pattern of a, a, a particular habit of something that you always do, something else has got the attention. That 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 goes with anything. That goes with relationship too. In your relationship, when you got someone that you're with, and you, you know, with a relationship, there's a habit. There's certain things you do. There's certain words. There's certain rhythm. When that rhythm is broken, when that rhythm is broken, and when that rhythm is broken, oftentimes what happens? Something else, or someone else, some serpent or something, is beginning to talk to him. Begin to talk to him. Begin to talk to her. When, when that when that rhythm is broken, when that conversation, when that when that love, when that sex life, whatever it is, is broken. Where it's different, things are different. Somebody else, something else, has slipped in. While men slept. God bless you.